On this episode of Stack Chat, we welcome Matt Brown, infrastructure engineer at Spotify. Hear how Kubernetes played a key role in making the migration of Spotify's backend microservices as seamless as possible for the 200 plus teams involved. Uh, thanks for joining me, Matt. So why did you choose Kubernetes over what I'm sure were many other alternatives for you? So we've been using containers for a long time, since about 2013, since Docker was very new. Um, we had built um, our own container orchestration system um, around 2013, before there really was other choices out there. Um, we called, named it Helios, and we open sourced it, coincidentally, the day before Kubernetes was announced. Um, so we didn't really know at the time that there was something else coming that we'd, we'd use. And so we knew for, I think for a long time, we didn't want to continue to be in the business of building our own orchestration platform. Um, Kubernetes is a wonderful open source project, a uh, huge amount of contributors, uh, great velocity. And so we knew eventually we wanted to move over to it just to get a lot more features um, and impact from the community. And we think in the end, the uh, orchestration platform that we'll have, this thing, the offering we can make to our own engineering team is going to be so much better if we can be a part of this big open source movement instead of having a team of four or five engineers building our own thing internally. We thought it would take, um, or at least I thought initially, we'd have to do a lot of selling, kind of talking, nudging people along, maybe pushing people along at some point. Um, but we found that most teams were pretty motivated um, to, to adopt Kubernetes. So how did you approach doing this transition from your custom-made orchestration to GKE over time? A big uh, principle we had for trying to figure out how are we going to move over was trying to, we really wanted to make the migration for each engineering team at Spotify as easy as possible. We feared if we had to teach every team, um, times 200 or so teams, uh, how do I use Kubernetes, or if it was a completely different system from what they use today, um, different metric systems, different ways to do logging, et cetera, um, or if the two systems couldn't talk to each other, then migration project would be never ending because Spotify's backend is organized into hundreds or thousands of microservices from different teams talking to each other. And so one thing we really were afraid of and wanted to avoid was in order for my team to move my service to Kubernetes, I need to organize with the other teams calling my service and we all have to move it at the same time. Um, that would have led to a ton of dependencies and would have taken many, many years to move one service over, let alone a thousand. We had built a system on top of Helios that we call Tugboat, and it really just gives us simpler interface and API. Um, and we realized, well, we already have almost every service at Spotify talking to this API. And basically, they can just say, they can tell Tugboat, I have a new version of my service. Please go deploy it out to the world. Um, and it gives a much simpler interface. Helios is a little bit low level. And so we realized, well, if we just add Kubernetes as another option to the system, we already have everything integrated with it. If we wanted to find a new next generation deployment platform, for example, um, we'd have to do all the work of integrating everybody with it all over again. So we just basically added Kubernetes as another option to Tugboat. How did you weigh the pros and cons of Kubernetes with your own management versus a managed GKE deployment? So over the years, as we were um, trying to think when is a good time to start seriously adopting Kubernetes, and we, we did want to wait for a while because Helios helped us make great strides, and it seemed like Kubernetes was still kind of growing, still um, figuring a lot of things out, just like any project. Um, as we were doing that and kind of waiting for when is the right time, we were moving our whole back end to Google Cloud um, anyway, getting rid of our own data centers. So there wasn't really much of an argument to be had to say, like, we want to build our own clusters, learn how to do all of the networking, do all the stuff ourselves the hard way. Um, one of our main motivations for adopting Google Cloud in general was just to take advantage of many managed services. And so our teams can kind of focus on upper layers and spend less time on like lower level things. So then with all these services, how do you make sure that as they're shifting, they can still collect metrics and understand their context within that Spotify microservices ecosystem? We did a lot of work as an infrastructure team to make sure that the things that, uh, if your team is building a container, the things that you would see in the environment in our old system in Helios would look mostly the same in Kubernetes. Um, and that's things like service discovery would be handled for you. That, that was one of the features of Helios. Um, metrics were provided by a, just a process running on a known port um, on the same machine as your container. So you could just send metrics to that. Um, and we had similar things for secrets and logging. So we did a lot of work to make sure that all of that looked the same in Kubernetes so mm -hmm. that you as an application or what we call a feature team really didn't have to rewrite your code at all. You can just take your container, which is already packaged up, and, and move it to the new, move it to Kubernetes. 
If you enjoyed this episode, check out the Stack Chat playlist for more videos.